Updating tonight's top stories, new measures announced to prevent serious strain on hospitals as COVID-19 cases are projected to rise further. That includes beefing up the home recovery program to support more people who will be recuperating at home. And for more infectious disease is expert, Dr. Leong Ho Nam joins us. Uh, Dr. Leong, we're now more than 82% fully vaccinated, uh, but social gatherings are back to two compared to eight in January this year. Uh, how did we get here and, and why such a big U-turn? Okay, so we first started off expecting 60 to 70% vaccination enough. And at the beginning of the year, when the vaccinations rolled out, we say, well, 70% uh, will be sufficient. But then the new Delta strain came along. It, it is a totally change in the ball game. It's as if the goalposts have shifted and people are saying perhaps 80%. And the government did make a promise that 80% they're going to open up. So they kept this promise and went on ahead when in actual fact we're dealing with a virus that's a lot more transmissible. Unfortunately, I'm going to say this, we set ourselves for failure with this because the virus has changed, but we have not caught up with it. And with this, when we opened up, 80% was clearly not sufficient. Then we ended up into a, I wouldn't call it U-turn, I'll say a detour. So we're going to detour and try to open up and prepare a little bit more hospital beds and services so they can cope with the expected up, upturn. I'm going to ask this to the people, who are we keeping this upturn for? I mean, who are we preparing for? In truth, we're actually preparing for the unvaccinated. Consistently, again and again, it is the unvaccinated that ends up very, very sick. And, and the government is trying to cater to beds especially ICU beds for those who are unvaccinated. So if anything, one last message again, please get vaccinated. Dr. Leung, put it into context for our viewers, some of whom may be very confused and frustrated as well by what you're terming a U-turn, or sorry, you, you, you're, ter you're terming it uh, as a type of detour. a U-turn. Uh, you know, you, we've got a detour, that's right. You, we've got other pilots as well going on. We've got those travel lanes still open. Uh, why, why, why these two, you know, the juxtaposition of these two uh, realities seems to jar with some Singaporeans? It seems rather contradictory, isn't it? I mean, at one point, we're trying to control the local people. But on the other hand, we're opening up travel lanes and stuff. But if you look at it, the travel lanes, people are going to come in, they're going to get swaps, and they're coming from places with low risk, lower prevalence of the illness to Singapore, where it's higher prevalence. So in truth, they're not going, they are, they are going to be diluted up by our strong presence, a strong number of cases which we have in Singapore. And I'm going to speak something for the foreign workers. We are going to release them out into the community. Uh, these are people that are living on the same planet as us and who has been vaccinated as well. In fact, their health is often better than many of us Singaporeans. So why should we constrain them? Because they have been infected, they may have been vaccinated, and they are just like any one of us. We shouldn't. But in truth, the one that one thing that really spreads the transmission from one person to another is the mass off events. This is where we dine out, socialize, and we drink. That's the situation where spreading occurs. So if we really want to hit the nail at this head, is to actually cut down these social activities where they meet and gather with mass off events. Mass off events equals trouble, equals spread of the virus. And what about home recovery program then? That has caused some public confusion as well. And presumably family members are not wearing masks around each other either. Yes. Um, OK, the home recovery program is it's something which we have to do. If you look at the other countries that have done it, they have done so well, home recovery, they managed to take it through. Now, we in the own home, even before the diagnosis of infection, there's a good chance that the infection has spread across. So these will be actually the rather safe place for them to be placed in, in the home recovery. I admit the rollout could be better, but I'm going to say a, a kind word to the Ministry of Health people. They prepared for a sprint, they'll be running a sprint, but the sprint has become a marathon for the last 20 months. So they really have been very tired out and there are so many things which they have to do and there are so many things which they plan for. So a uh, shout out to my MOH friends and colleagues who are trying very hard to solve this. So Singapore, I'm going to ask you to do me one big favour, give some grace. 
Give some love, compassion to the Ministry of Health. Give some grace to the people who are trying to get everything through. Now, if you can't get through to the line hotlines, give them some more time. Try again later. Eventually, MOH will catch up and they will be able to help you. Now, I don't speak for MOH, but I certainly see their pain and their suffering. Certainly, just as we have been from the very beginning of this pandemic, we've got to protect uh, the frontline staff. Uh, but we're hearing numbers and expecting numbers to go up every day. We're hearing these could go up to, to up to 6,000 daily at some point. How high you know, are we expecting this peak to be, Dr. Long? Does it matter how high the peak is? And, and what's possibly the new threshold when, when these numbers finally plateau? So if you look at the UK and Europe data, when they had their Freedom Day, um, it took about two months to three months for them to equalize. And that is, for Singapore, we started our opening somewhere in August. So I'm anticipating that we will stabilize towards the end of October to the end of November. At those numbers, it will kind of stay stable and we will go into an equilibrium in terms of the number of new cases uh, found, etc. So if you do a trajectory, it's going to end up at about 5,000 to 7,000 cases a day. And that to me is, the uh, is what I'm anticipating. That's the new equilibrium. Now, when we actually do this social restrictions, we're going to slow it back a bit, which means that I might even push this equilibrium later on towards December. But I'm really looking at a figure between five to 7,000 daily thereafter. Dr. Leong, thank you very much for talking to us this evening. Dr. Leong Ho Nam there, infectious diseases expert.